Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com. That crack of the bat that you hear means it's time for today in sports betting, MLB style. And of course, doing it with the one, the only Scott Reichel. Scott, we got four juicy games on tap today. It's a full board, man. I don't know how many more full boards we're going to get, but I'm excited. Are you excited? Uh, yeah, I know two games yesterday. I personally chopped both of them. Uh, I thought Oakland put up more of a fight against Houston. We'll talk about that in a little while. And uh, then you had my Yankees, and uh, they continued to bop. So that worked. That was fun. Stan had his quote-unquote Yankee moment, I guess. At least the biggest moment he's had up to this point. And we'll see if it carries over because they got a pretty young – they got a pretty, pretty young guy uh, starting in comparison to Garrett Cole. So we'll see what happens in game two there. I'm put you on a three-minute restriction talking about the Yankees. I'm not going to – I'm not going to rant too much about it. About the Yankees. I know you don't. I know you don't. I'm, I'm just saying game one, they look good. The rest of the world hates the Yankees. I don't know when you people will figure it Anytime out. Anytime the Yankees' bullpen gives up no runs in three innings, I consider that a massive moral victory, win or lose. So it was a good performance in game one. So here's a question. I, you know, we always talk about uh, making sure everybody likes and subscribes. And, of course, we, we, I want some comments today in this video whether you guys think we should do an election show or not. Scott and I have been toying with the idea of doing a show on the election. We would do it. Completely down the middle. It's not going to favor one side or the other. It's going to be just strictly from an odds perspective. We would talk about the presidential race. We talk about some long shots, things like that. Uh, a few of the senatorial races where we might make some uh, opportunity to make some money there. So we want to know what you guys think. Should we? Should we do it? Should we? Should we stray from sports for one of these shows and do an election special? Probably uh, yeah, two weeks out from the election, something. You like can that. say no, and we're fine with that. Also, yeah, absolutely. We're just asking. We're tabling. Uh, just, just, just put it out there. I know there's a lot of div division due to politics these days. That is not our intention. We're not, we're not going to sit here and rant about one side or the other. We're just going to talk about it from a strict odds perspective. So, uh, number one, I'd be curious to see if we can do that. Uh, but number two, uh, it'll be curious to see, uh, what kind of engagement we would get if people would be doing that because I made a lot of money in the last election, Scott. I had a, I had a, I had a position on both of them, a very, very advantageous price. Uh, it was locked into profit, and of course, uh, this would be the, it was the equivalent of the uh, Miami Heat winning the NBA Finals for you um, by having Donald Trump win the, uh, win the election. So nice. All right, so put that in the comment section. Besides that, let us know what you're playing on the baseball, you know, sports and stuff. That's that's cool too. So Scotty, let's start it off here. Oh man, it's my it's my money makers. It's my money makers. The Miami Marlins. Going up against the Atlanta Braves. Max Freed on the mound for the Atlanta Braves. Going up against uh, Sandy Alcantara or Alcantara, depending on how you, whether you pronounce it or pronounce it the way it's spelled. <sighs> Miami Marlins at plus 183, Scott. Talk me out of it. I really can't. Uh, my only argument against that would be Max Freed. And just repeat yeah. the name about 40 times, and then hopefully you'd get the memo. But <laughs> even though the Braves did win, uh, pretty handily against the uh, Reds. Their offense really wasn't that great at all. I know that they woke up towards the back end of game two. What, they had two runs in the first, like, 20 innings of the series or something? Like, their offense yeah. didn't do anything that entire series. I know, I know that the Reds, of course, have really, really good starting pitching with Bauer and Castillo going games one and two, and that's, I mean, that's just a next level. And Both of them were as good as advertised. Uh, they were both really, really good. Uh, but Miami, uh, yeah, I mean, they took care of this against the Cubs. They did, did so pretty handily. I know the Cubs aren't that good, uh, and I've been saying that they've had hitting issues at Wrigley for years. Uh, but this year in particular, they couldn't hit the ball at Wrigley. It was really weird. But You know, I, you know what I think it was, Scott? And if you, if you watch the brother reports like we did every day, they didn't have a lot of wind blowing out this year. Well, that, that's how it factors in with home runs. I'm talking about also average. They just couldn't hit the ball. Well, true. But I mean, every, every, I mean, that, it affects everything. It does. It really does. So you have some inflated numbers everything. there. Yeah, you have inflated numbers, et cetera, at home. You, you know, you used to see those Wrigley totals 10 and a half, 11. Yeah, I'm not saying like it's the same yeah. as Coors. Yeah, it's not the same boost as Coors Field uh, numbers on any given day, but Wrigley this year did not really do as many favors to hitters as they had done in years past. That I, think, I think the wind blowing out 15 plus. Is a bigger advantage than uh, than course? I think it's very close. I don't. I, I think it's a very close as far as your numbers go, as far as the total amount of runs scored. Yeah. 
either or, Miami's pitching was very good in that series. Yeah. Uh, they were, yeah, they were solid. Offensively, they were fine. I can't say that they were great, but they were good enough. Right. Which is really all you look for. Uh, one of those guys was, was, was Sandy Alcantara, Scott, and went, to, went uh, six and two-thirds, gave up three hits, one earned. He's a good pitcher. He's a good pitcher. He's, and, and the thing about – I like him. Uh, he kind of goes against the trend these days. He eats innings. Yeah. He'll go out there, and, and that's a good thing with this Marlins pen because that's certainly one of their weaknesses. Um, he'll their go pen out, is one of their weaknesses, but their pen is actually not awful. Kinsler has actually been a decent closer this year. It's well, it's, the problem is getting to him. Yeah, I, I know. I'm saying, though, they do have a pretty solid guy in the ninth, which is uh, a pleasant surprise. Uh, true. Uh, Alcantara has gone, uh, gone six or better in, in, uh, in seven of his eight starts. He's uh, the only one time he's gone uh, just four innings, and that was against uh, Tampa Bay, kind of lit him up. But other than that, he's been very solid. He doesn't give up home runs. He, you know, he, he walks guys, probably walks a few too many guys. Uh, as a lot of young pitchers do, but I think they've got a I think they've got a puncher's chance here. Um, Atlanta had the season series, but uh, I think it was I think it was uh, six and four. So uh, yeah, it was six. It was six four. So that's you know that's not exactly domination. This is a, this is a team. This is a Miami team that has been by far the most profitable team in baseball this season, and it's and it's not even it's not even close. Yeah, based on the current price and everything. I'm going to ask, what's the first five under? Uh, at eight and a half, it should – yeah, I don't think we're going to get four and a half. I don't think it's going to be four. I don't think it will be either, but I have to ask. It is. It's, it's four. You got, a, uh, you, got a, you got a little grace there going minus 103 on the under. It's not a terrible play. I'm going, to prob- I'm going to go there. I know that the games so far in the DS series have been higher scoring, the two that we've had. But right. and I know it's also in Houston, which tends to lead to more runs, but – both starting pitchers I really like. Both lineups, even though they have uh, not lost a playoff game up to this point, both lineups have yet to score more than five runs in a game. Uh, both of these teams in the four combined games have not gotten to six. And I've not gotten to seven, I mean, in any of the games. With these two starting pitchers and the current forms of the offense, I'm just going to go with the first five under and hope for the best. I'm really torn here. I, I like the Marlins. I also like the Marlins under three and a half. I don't. I don't think they. I don't think they do a ton against Freed. I, I think this is going to be a very low scoring game. Uh, I think. I, I. I don't. I don't hate the first five under. I think that's. I think that's a solid play. I, I wish like hell it was four and a half. I still don't like the Braves bullpen, so I'm trying to get them out of the equation because I understand they end up making a lot of moves. Walt Smith's pretty good, etc. They have this fascination with Luke Jackson, and I don't think Luke Jackson's that good, and yet he pitches all the time. You notice that too? I feel like he pitches almost every game. He does. Uh, this is a Braves. Good or am I missing something? This is the end of the day, though. This Braves is a bullpen is a, is a bullpen that's put up good stats. They've uh, they've got they've got a three point three ERA. They've been fine. They just have a couple of pitchers who I just don't like to rely on on a regular basis, and oh. I don't want to get involved. Okay. All right. Good enough. Um, but I like the starters, so I'll go first five under. You know, Scott, I we've we've talked about this. I've, I've made a lot of money this season. By looking at Miami and looking at the matchup, going, oh, there's there's no way they can win this game. There's they're just outclassed. They're plus one ninety, and then they do, and you take them, and you and you just, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna. There's no reason to not take Miami. I mean, they they they're undefeated in the playoffs. It, they, they've it's not like they've been struggling up to this point. No, they've actually looked pretty good lately. No, this is all about this is all about Max Fried and whether they can score enough runs to get to him. Uh, Very poor enough run. Just keep the game close. He, he just keep it within one run or a tie game. When Freed comes out, I think he'll consider that a victory. Oh sure, that's what I'm saying. So it's not even about scoring. Even if all, all you need is Alcantara to pitch well, and if this game's within one run in the sixth or seventh, you don't feel too bad. Even if you're behind with a plus one eighty, plus one ninety ticket. So yeah, there's a decent amount of ways to win late, even if Freed pitches well. You got a shot, and you know I took I took I took this as the play of the day. Um, I, I took. I took I took Miami to do it. Uh, I like the price. A good price. I'll play it again, and I'll go with you and play the uh, Marte. Not being in the in the game does hurt a little bit because uh, yep. he's going to be uh, left off the roster, but uh, with the broken hand, of course. But still, uh, Miami ended up uh, dealing without him, and they won anyway. But if Miami pitches well, this game will be really, really close. Yeah, this is a tough. This is a tough fade for of Max Freed here. He's been. He's. he's- 
just lights out. He's yeah. great. And most importantly is the Braves win when he pitches. They're 11 and one with him on the mound. You know what, Scott? That's, that's, uh, why not, why not make it 11 and two? I'm okay with that. Okay. Cool. I'm going to go with the first five on. I'll take Miami. I will also, I'll take the full game under this as well. I'll take a full game under eight. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, move on to the next game on our team. By the way, that is a, uh, that is a 208 Eastern start time. So get your ducats down on that quick, kids. Uh, this is a game that turned ugly yesterday, Scott. We thought the, I had the ticket on the athletics. Thought that looked pretty good. And it, oh, it looked like it was going to turn ugly early, and then it turned ugly in the opposite direction. Yeah. Oakland went up three nothing, and you're thinking, "Oh, the wheels might fall off." Then the wheels did fall off, but for the other team. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, this is this is as close to uh, pick them as you're going to get. Minus one hundred seven on the A's, minus one hundred three on the Astros. Nine is your total, and. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, so I have a I have a play the day video on this. Uh, so um, I'm not gonna talk about the side. But one question that I just wanted to know: Do you think that the current money line prices are accurate? Or do you think that they should be adjusted? Uh, personally, as in, do you think Oakland should be favored and Houston should be the underdog, et cetera? I understand the question. It's, it was it was it one of the tough ones? Uh, I'm just, I was just making sure. Okay. Because I don't want you to make the argument saying, well, Houston should actually be minus 104 instead of minus 103. I'm like, no. You know what I, I mean? And I, know, and I know what you want me to say. I know what the case is. No, no, no. I, I, it's not a matter of what you want. I'm just asking you a question. You can say whatever you, whatever you, you want. Always ask, you ask a question. There's, there's always a point. There's always somewhere you want me to go when you ask a question. Uh, I th- I'm just saying that we could disagree, and I'm fine with disagreeing with you if you just no, want to direct I know you have, you have an unnatural hater to Sean and I. I understand that. Manai doesn't bother me because the A's always score for him. I don't know if he's any good, but the A's give him a lot of run support usually. So I'm kind of just curious. You want you want me to say that the, you want me to say the Astros should be minus 120 favorites here, don't you? I don't know about minus 120, but I think minus 115 makes sense. <laughs> uh, Do you think Oakland should be favored in this game? I, th- I think it's I think it's right where it sh- I think it's right where it should be. I mean, you could you could maybe give a little nod to the Astros. I get it. Uh, Frambert El- Valdez hasn't been uh, has been probably better than Manaya coming down the stretch here. Valdez also pitched recently. He pitched in uh, Game One of the ALCS. Gave up no runs, two hits. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and and we talked about Manaya hasn't hasn't pitched since uh, what the- September twenty third. 23rd of September. And it's been over two weeks. Right? That could make a difference. Although, you know, you know, these guys are throwing on the side. You know they're doing simulated games. I don't know that that's that, that big of a deal. I think simulated games matter, but I think it's better when you actually have real games in comparison. It is hard to handicap this game because I hate Houston so much. Um, I don't but, like Houston either. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at the line and I'm looking at everything. And I'm thinking to myself, is this line accurate? And – I don't know if you can really read much from game one, et cetera. Do you read anything from game one? Because no. I, I thought Oakland kind of blew a golden opportunity to take a one nothing series lead there. Um, well, I was surprised. I was surprised by the ineptitude of the Oakland pen. This is a, this is a pen that has been uh, one of their strong points. Uh, yeah. And it was, it was all, I mean, you had the error which extended the inning, which led to that large outburst. And I think it was the fifth. It was either the fifth or the sixth that led to a couple of runs yeah, there. Yeah. If they gave up seven runs, only three of them were earned. But still, Houston gave up no hits in the bullpen for five innings. So I guess the question that I have is that Oakland's favorite in this game, and slight favorites, of course. Based on the current form of both teams, what area does Oakland actually do better at than Houston besides arguably starting pitching as a whole? Well, you know, I mean, you could, you, you know, you, before yesterday, you could have made the argument of the bullpen. I'm still, yeah, 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 I agree, but I'm saying based on current form. I don't, I, I don't think Oakland's bullpen was that good against Chicago either. Well, here's the thing that I'm surprised that Houston doesn't hit left handers better. Uh, they, they score the same amount of runs against left handers as they do against right handers. And with this right handed heavy lineup, uh, that's surprising for me with, with Correa. With Altuve, with with uh, George Springer, well, they all couldn't hit the ball during the regular season. But it appears that all of them simultaneously woke up at the same. I, I don't really know what's going on over there, but everyone woke up apparently. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Do you right now, based on current form or whatever? I know it's one game for the series. Is there one area you look at Oakland and just say this team has a massive advantage? Because I I don't see it. Um, I would I would say pitching. 
Okay. So we'll see what happens. A massive advantage? No, I think they have. A, I think they have a slight advantage. You think that Manaya is better than Valdez? You talking about this particular game or as a whole? However you want to interpret it. I think th- I think these are two. I think these are two pitchers with with very similar with very similar skill sets. Okay. Um, I, I think it. I think it's a wash. I, I, you know, and I know I gave you a hard time, but you know, Manaya was a royal, and we were never big fans of him. We he was one of these guys that always had potential, and just never seemed to realize it. He kind of he kind of seemed to be the same kind of pitcher out there in Oakland. Put together some good starts this season, but I, I, I don't have faith in Manaya. I, I just don't. Do you have more faith in Valdez over Manaya, or you have no faith in either? You you could say you have no faith in either, and I, that's fine. I'm just curious. I probably I probably have a, I have probably have a small lean towards Framber Valdez at this point. I Valdez against Minnesota, I thought was fantastic. I, I thought he really showed me something there. Yeah, he did. He pitched, he pitched extremely well. There's no there's no question about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and coming down you know coming down the stretch, he had two he had put together two good starts in a row. Of course, one of them was against Texas, but in his, in his four starts before that, he'd been pretty bad. He'd, he'd given he'd given up he'd given up twenty earned runs over over four starts. So it wasn't exactly like he you know he ran through the tape at the end. Well, Manaya, on the other hand, has been very good. He's uh, he's got uh, quality starts his last his last three times out. <sighs> I don't know, Scott. Oh, uh, I actually want I want to ask you one question just based on. I think I think Houston I think Houston hits the ball better than Oakland. I really do. Well, I, I have to agree with that. Without Matt Chapman in the lineup, even with the, the fact that everybody's – we've all seen the meme going around about the difference in their low averages and what, whatnot. They're all, they're all waking up. That's all I know. Well, and, you know, and, you, and you, they've, they've got more potential to hit home runs. At the end of the day, these guys are going to these guys are going to run into some balls. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I like I – like especially, especially with Manaya, who doesn't exactly have – what's his fastball, like 91, 92? Yeah, he's – yeah. He's, as, as with most like, – hangers in there, they're gone. That's all. Yeah, he doesn't. As with most most lefties, he's he's you know he can't throw the ball straight. He's gonna he's gonna rely on his off speed stuff. He doesn't. Nobody, you know, very few lefties have a. Uh, yeah, one question that I was gonna ask you though, general rule of thumb when it comes to pitchers, how big of a sample size do you need in postseason postseason stats to start borderline fading pitchers based on post postseason results? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a random question. I'm just curious because you, if you just show, sure, of course, was the obvious. In contrast to the regular season stats? Just in general. For example, Kershaw in the playoffs. You know, you think, you think Kershaw the other day. How'd that go? No, but I'm just saying, you've had some pitchers who just had been worse in the postseason than the regular season. I don't think you can say that because by Manaya, he's appeared in one playoff game and he has an ERA of 18, but it's one playoff game. So I don't think that's worth anything. Well, more than that. I don't. I don't really think that's a thing. I think if you can pitch, you can pitch. I, I don't know if it's a thing either. I'm just throwing now, it out there because some now here's, now right here's the deal. Now, at the end of a 160 game season, after 32 starts, are you tired? Do you have arm fatigue? Are there other issues? Yeah, that's quite possible. So, the, so then you have to look at the fact they've only they've only had what 11, 12 starts this season. Yeah. So if that's the problem. As opposed to, you know, I don't, once you get to this level, I just, I refuse to believe that the stage is too big for some of the, some of these guys. I just think we're up against more talented teams. That's, that's my takeaway. Maybe. Yeah. And I, I agree. I agree with that. And you're, and you're, and you're certainly facing, in the case of Kershaw, you're going to face the number one pitcher, you know, so. I, I was just asking, cause I know a lot of people might read into it and say, Oh, this player is bad postseason. I'm just curious. What's your take on it? Because. <laughs> I don't know if it really matters. I thought it was worth talking about food for. I see somebody with a with a huge drop off in postseason, like Kershaw, it would certainly cause me to do more research and find out why. Yeah. So, but as just as far as just an auto fade of somebody that has uh, four starts and has, yeah. has yeah, no, I don't know. It's not an auto fade. I was just curious if that yeah. meant anything to you. I, I the for me this series comes down to the fact that I think the that the Astros have are certainly hitting the ball better right now. The experience plays a factor up to this point, or do you think I, that? You know what? I do. Now, I, I will say that. I do think experience plays a factor. I think you're going to you, – because hitting is all about being comfortable to play. Mm-hmm. And I think, if, I think if you have any reason to be uncomfortable, if you have any reason to have something going through your head that's not about hitting that baseball, uh, yeah, that can, that can certainly affect somebody. Yeah. I, I don't know that it's late enough in the playoffs where it really matters, but 
Um, yeah, I think Houston have an experience. I think that's uh, been there, done that. They're they're not going to panic. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a fan of uh, of their of their manager of Dusty Baker. I'm not either. I'm just asking because Oakland's kind of in uncharted territory right now. Yeah, I agree, and uh, I think I think Oakland peaked too soon. I think this is a team on the decline. I, yeah. Has Houston even peaked yet? What's that? Has Houston peaked yet? I don't know. I, I don't hope, know either. I hope so, but I think it's possible that they haven't. Mm. I think it's possible they're going to go on a run here. Uh, at the bottom, at the end of the day. I like Houston minus 103 very much here. Yeah, I would play the day, but I'm going to lean to the over. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, I bet I can guess where your play of the day is. Uh, but, yeah. I think I'm, that, sure, I'm sure you can figure it out. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think the over is a, a, a good play there as well. I like it. It's, it's, a, it's a day game out there in Oakland. And it's, not, that, it's not in Oakland, but, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 a, day, it's a day game in, uh, in Texas. And that makes a difference. Although, are they, are they, are they playing a the globe? Uh. No, they're playing in California. They're playing in Los Angeles. That's why I'm not sure what you're. Yeah, they're playing in Dodger Stadium. Yeah, they're playing at. Uh, they're playing. They're playing at Dodger Stadium. By the by way, the words, it's a day game in California that tends to lead to more runs. Uh, by the By the way, uh, Houston had 16 hits yesterday in Dodger Stadium. That was more hits than the Dodgers had there all year long. I did. I did read that random fact somewhere. You mean yeah, in a single game? Yeah, Houston went off. Um, so yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I think runs come in bunches. I like the I like the I like the over out there, and I I do like I do like Houston a minus one hundred three. I think that's a good price. Yeah. All right, Yankees Rays. You have three minutes. Go ahead. So it all started when the no. Um, actually, in this spot here, I'm going to lean to the over. Um, I'm not really going to spend much time on this. Uh, simply put, Garcia. I don't know if he's going to be starting for five innings. I don't know if he's going to only pitch three. They're going to bring in Montgomery to kind of form a joint start situation. All I know is Glass now has been pretty good. Yankees have done decently against them, but the Yankees are scoring at least nine runs a game in the playoffs up to this point, and they really looked good against Snell. They've done a really good job at forcing pitchers into pretty large pitch counts by the fifth inning. So they, I actually have been impressed by what they've, 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 they've taken a lot of. They're taking a lot of good pitches right now. Yeah, they've been very patient at the plate, and Tampa, even though they are not exactly the greatest offensive team in terms of talent. We were talking before we went on air how there's really nobody on the team that threatens you besides maybe one guy. Uh, and his name escapes me. I can't fully pronounce it. It's with, it's with an A. You, you know what I'm talking about. Right. We're the left fielder. Yes. He's, he's the best hitter on the team by far. He's only been there for like three months. So he's – that tells all you need to know about the team hitting. But Garcia, the inexperience by play a factor. Yankees bullpen also might by play a factor because they were great yesterday, but that's not really consistent based on what they've done this season. Based on how the Yankees are hitting eight and a half is too low. I got to take the over. Yeah, I'm with you. This is it's, it's mainly going to be they're talking about a uh, a fate of glass. Now this is a game where the where the Tampa Bay Rays are actually the uh, the underdog. I mean the favorites rather at minus one twenty five. Because we have a lot of uncertainty with the starting pitching, but the Yankees have been so good hitting that I don't know value wise. I lean Yankees, but I'm going to lean to the over because I I feel like you can make an argument that this can go over a new a couple of ways. I'll tell you what. If you're gonna if you're gonna play if you're gonna play one of these bets, you should couple them together. If you're gonna if you're gonna play the Yankees or if you're gonna play the over, they should be together. Uh, I think I think you're setting yourself up for a nice little payout there at plus one fifteen. You're probably in the three to one range for for a two teamer. Uh, I don't think the I don't think the Yankees win four to two. That's uh, certainly possible, but I don't see the Yankees pitching staff. I think this is a game where they're gonna have to score five or six runs to win. Yeah. I, I see that too. For me, Glass now is a good pitcher. Uh, playoff wise, has been pretty good as well. Just, I, I really like how the Yankees have been forcing starting pitchers into leaving the game after about five or six. Now, I know Snell's had innings limits anyway all year. They've had some really good at bats. Yeah. For the Yankees up to this point. And Tampa, who, even though they aren't the greatest hitting team, they'll bunt, they'll do a bunch of small stuff. They'll try to actually manufacture runs, which is something that you like to see if you have an over. First and second, they're bunting. Like, like that, that's what I'm talking about. Like they'll do the small stuff to try to set themselves up for a decent amount of runs. Yeah, agreed. agreed. They're only to the over. Okay. All right, very good. Um, I will say, I will, uh, you know what? Talk about it. I might as well do it. I'm going to play both of them together. I'm going to take a, I'm going to, I'm going to step out and take a two teamer on that, Scott. You're talking about, you're going to take both money lines with the over? No, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the Yankees and the over. Yeah. Okay. Plus 115. 
and as a eight and a half. Yeah, I like Garcia, but at some point you got to ask yourself if this is really the pitcher you want against Glass now. Garcia could be good in the start. He might not be. I still don't know how many innings actually going to pitch because he might get out of tr- he might get into trouble. They might pull him immediately. Uh, yeah, Tampa definitely has a significant starting pitching advantage. Yeah, three point three point one six. We're, we're get, you're getting plus plus three point one six on that two teamer. Yeah, I can't argue with the two teamer, but okay. I'm just I'm just saying in general. All right, very good. Uh, and the last game on the agenda. Speaking of Dodger Stadium, here's a team that won't be playing in Dodger Stadium. It's the Dodgers. Uh, Dodgers, big favorites over the pods, minus 161, plus 148. Uh, Scott, the Twitterverse uh, says that uh, it's this is going to be uh, Mike Clevenger going for the Dodgers, uh, excuse me, going for the Padres. Uh, that has not been announced officially, but that is the that is the rumor. He is, he is healthy. He is on the roster. Uh, your thoughts on this one, the Dodgers minus 161, Padres plus 148. Eight and a half is your number. Uh, the Dodgers are sending uh, Walker Bueller. 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 I'm sorry. To, uh, to the mound. I didn't say anything because I was letting you do all three. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. for, that's, that's what happens when you come to rehearsal, buddy. Um, mm. Bueller's got the blister problem, man. Does that worry you? I'm going with the over. Uh, because the, I feel like this total is based too much on the current starting pitchers here with Bueller and Clevenger. Clevenger's off an injury, so I don't know if he's going to go more than five. Right. And Bueller has a blister injury, and I don't know if he's going to go five. Help the blister burst, he might go two innings. So you're going to give me a total of eight and a half, which, I mean, it's a decent total, but both both lineups are very good. And both starting pitchers have serious health question marks. So, for me, with both pitchers not being fully at 100% or having some potential worst-case scenarios there, I'm going to go with the over. Because I think both teams can score at least five runs in any given game. So, I'm going to go with the over. I think, that, I think that's solid. Um, you know, this is a, this is a Padres team that's uh, – They can man. bop. What's that? They can bop. They can hit. Well, they can. They can, absolutely, they can absolutely hit. And I was just going to say that they're uh, – their bullpen, you know, it was dreadful early. And they I don't have- know what they did against the Cardinals in game three, but good for them. They had a full-on bullpen day where everyone pitched about one inning and they gave up no runs. They were fantastic. Yeah, yeah they can they can trot them out there. I do worry about I do worry about the closer position. They've got uh, Trevor Rosenthal, who was uh, closed for the Royals, is kind of a kind of a comeback player. They they traded in midseason. Been good with them. Uh, yeah, you know what? There's there's never a no sweat. There's oh, never- of course. At some point, he's going to blow up. But, but then again, you have to worry about the Dodgers. I was like, I can't Jansen. I think no. I think Jansen's better than Rosenthal, but he's thrilled with either. No? No, at least, you know, the thing about Rosenthal, at least he can throw it by you. You know, he's, he's still throwing gas. He's I'm still, still impressed he can throw that that hard. He's had a couple of injuries. He's getting yeah. up there in years. He's still launching this thing. At like 99-100 with the Royals. Yeah. That was incredible to see. Yeah. And I, you know, that's, I kind of, I was kind of sorry to see him go. Of course, we, we just had him on a one year yeah, you, had, you had a great deal. You'd sign him and you flipped him for prospects. Which is really yeah. Like, yeah. 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 You, yeah he's just yeah, exactly. And that's exactly why you sign those guys. You, you know, you sign them to a one year prove it. And if they can, you flip them because the last thing a team like the Royals needs is a great closer right now. And they're also, and they're also on the cheap. So if you want to go for a run, you can get a cheap closer. Yeah. Bullpen guy. Absolutely. So, I do worry about that if the, if the, if the Padres get a lead, uh, hanging on to that. Of course, that's I you got a, you got a couple of guys that are out there with gas cans, and it's just a matter of whether everybody's going to be able to throw a match or not and get it close enough to, fire, to start the fire. So, uh, but the, the the Padres bullpen has gotten a lot better because at the beginning of the year, especially when they were still trotting out Kirby Yates, holy shit, that was uh, well Yates had massive arm issues and he's he's done for the year pretty much. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is that was a, that was a that, that entire bullpen was useless to start the year. Yeah, they had an ERA over six, seven for a whole lot of the season, and they've 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 got it down. Uh, they they've they've got it down to under five, um, which is incredible uh, based on the way they were going. So, you know, I, what are your thoughts on the Dodgers bullpen? I know statistically they've been good. Yeah. Am I just – maybe it's the fact that I've seen Dave Roberts blow a bunch of playoff games in his career already. Why do I feel like they're just going to force Joe Kelly into one of these games and he's going to be terrible? Am I wrong for feeling that way? Because I think Joe Kelly's not a good pitcher at all. No, I don't think we see Joe Kelly. 
I don't know about that. Eh, I don't know. It seems like maybe, you know, garbage, a long maybe in garbage time or a, or a long release situation. His numbers this year is a 1.8 ERA. I just know that he's not very good. Yeah, we'll see. And the Dodgers, the Dodgers bullpen stats are, are very good. Man. They're very good. I'm I'm just wondering how many of these guys you trust. Jansen, I can trust. I, like, I actually like uh, I like uh, Buster and I like uh, Trinan. Well, of course, they could have. I don't know who they're in a five game series. I don't know who you, who the you, have, you could have. You could have May coming out of the pen. You could have Gonzalez coming I'm out. Of the, you like Buster as well, right? Uh, yeah, Bradwell. He's very he's very good. He's, he's very good. And I think that Trinan's good as well. But for some reason, they insist on using Jansen in the ninth, and I'm, I'm, I still don't understand it, but sure. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so you got, a thought, you got a thought on this one? I'm leaning over. Okay. Yeah, both starters have serious issues in terms of yep. health, and I think that even if they pitch well, they're both going to be on innings restrictions, so they should be. Yep. So looking at five innings apiece for both maybe. Sure, I'll take four innings of the Padres bullpen with the Dodgers as well. Sure, why not? Agreed. Do- and the Dodgers are a great late inning club. Yeah, and even though the Dodgers have a good have a good bullpen, it's not like the Padres can't hit. I can see them scoring a couple runs as well. They're a lot like they're a lot like the Yankees. You find yourselves up five three after five innings. You're like, man, we're going to be able to win this game, and then they just do their late inning stuff. Get a couple three four home runs. Like, all right, yeah. cool, we're good to go. Yep, exactly right. So yeah, I, I agree with you there. Uh, I'd sniff the Padres at plus 148. Uh, I don't, I don't hate that. I don't, uh, there's a, there's a whole lot of Dodgers pitchers I wouldn't fade. Uh, Bueller this season isn't necessarily one of them. So it almost, an almost three to two. I'm tempted. All, yeah. yeah. All I know is that I'm not going to be fading Kershaw as much after that performance, but Bueller's injuries, is that even baked into the line enough? Cause I'm not sure if it is. I don't. I don't think it is. I, I don't think I, it is either. Because Buer, don't me wrong. If Buer's at full health, you're going. All right, I'll give you seven innings, one run, like good enough. Right. Going, what a maximum of five. Yeah, blister issues. That that's a that's, that's a, a serious problem for a pitcher. And depending on where it is, it's going to inhibit you to be able to, to be able to throw the curveball. You're throwing uh, like ran like cream on it and whatever, and you have to throw pitches. Like it, it, can, it can burst at any second. Like that's a serious problem. You know, and I, I when when I was younger, uh, I was take, I took the kids one time to get autographs of the, uh, when the Royals came out of there. Uh, they're, they're basically were the parking lot. You'd stand up against the fence, and they'd come out after the game before they got. Okay. There. And I I saw Jeremy Allfeld, uh, Jeremy Allfeld, who fought blister issues basically his entire career. Mm-hmm. And somebody was there, and he was signing autographs. They said, "Jeremy, let me see the blister." I was standing right next to him, and, and they showed the blister, and it's not like. It's not like what you and I think of when we get a blister, when we out there, when we when we rake the yard without gloves on or something, you get a little blister. Go, oh, that kind of hurts. I mean, it was, it was like underneath the nail and split the nail out. You're like, how in the hell does anybody pitch with something like that? And those when those guys talk about having blisters, man, it's well, they, they showed Bueller's blister when he was pitching in the first series against Milwaukee, and it didn't look good either. And he's trying yeah. to cover with random creams or powders or it, at some point you got to wonder how much of an impact does it have and i think it does yeah give me the give me the san diego blister busters at plus 148 and uh give me the over eight and a half as well yeah i'm just gonna go with the over here all right good enough all right good enough well that is our baseball show for today he is scott rice i'm scott steen we appreciate you watching of course and hey you want to find out what the experts are saying other than us Check out winnersandwiners.com each and every day for not just these games, man, but full write-ups, predictions on every game every single day. That is your place to go. And your place to be is right here every single day, as Scott and I do it uh, daily. At least at least one show a day. And yep. That's two, three, four. We don't care. We'll do it. We care, Scott? No. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't care. Okay. All right. So for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at Winners and Winners, we appreciate you stopping by today and uh, make it part of your routine. Come back to see us tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.